You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. I got a chance last winter to design a new ski, this kind of crazy, short, asymmetrical, fat thing. Have you the seen bu- it? The butter knife? Yeah. The, the SR? The schlong, the SR. The schlong wrap? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got to ask you about that. The SR, but where did that come from? The schlong wrap? I wasn't even going to bring that up, but I'm glad you did. I forgot about it. The well, sh- yeah, they, so we wanted to call this, the initial ski name was the Schlong Rat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because it was just a name that was... Uh, I had head. a friend in California and he's got a like a wiener dog, like Boston Terrier mix kind of <laughs> thing. Call him the Schlong Rat. He calls it the Schlong Rat. <laughs> it's just kind of this kind of yeah, yeah. mutt of an animal. Great dog. Um, but so anyways, <laughs> catchy name. I just decided to run with it as, with a ski design, especially the ski. It's a little weird. It's short. It's not, doesn't look. It's got that weird, it's got that little, almost like um, each tail has got a cutout. So when you put it together, it's almost like a swallowtail. Exactly. And that was, so, so that instead, was, instead of having a swallowtail individually on each ski, it's kind of cut out onto the inside exactly. edge that when you ski like me with your legs together, it acts as a, it's like a swallowtail. Swallowtail. Yeah. And a swallowtail. To me, is uh, you know removing surface area, you're moving float in the tail, to in to to help increase lift and float in the nose. Mm-hmm. You know the tail goes down, the nose should go up. In theory, um, and I've ridden. A, I actually the inspiration for that ski came from a swallowtail snowboard that I was riding up in Revelstoke one day, and uh, with my buddy Oliver, aka the Garbage Bear. The Garbage Bear. <laughs> <laughs> we were riding in Revy, and I was just so blown away by the snowboard. It was just like just cruising through the trees effortlessly and on my 118s i can't really like make these short radius floaty turns i kind of have to almost hop turn because the ski wants to go fast it yeah. wants to it the ski is designed to perform at a higher speed yeah. say a moderate to high speed we're going to go smash some turns out we're going to go we're, L- we're, longer we're, yeah. radius turns that don't necessarily um faces cool wars Big air, yeah, so not necessarily like a tree ski, but it still handles. Maybe well. yeah, tre- you know, trees trees can be tight, so it's tighter, more open, but still, the ski just you know, I find myself almost doing kind of like trying to lift my feet out of the snow to get the ski to turn, yeah, because it just wasn't planing at low speeds. Um, so this ski was, you know, we shortened it up. It's like a one seventy five, one seventy six, and um, you know, it's one twenty six hundred foot. It's super fat, so. My whole, my whole thing was let's design a ski that has the surface area of the 118, yeah, but is shorter, more nimble, yeah. floats, <clears throat> and instead of reducing surface area in the tail by putting a swallowtail in each ski, put a asymmetric design in the tail that reduces surface area but still maintains structural integrity. Because I think putting a swallowtail on a ski, a ski's pretty narrow. Yeah. So all of a sudden you have these like two pointy toothpick almost kind of things sticking off the back that are fragile. It's a it's a kind of ski that'll that'll force a person to, that skis in the back seat to not do that. If you like if you ever take it out of the pow, do you know what I mean? Like if you ever get back onto the You're right. you ever get back onto the groomers or anything like that, well you're not gonna be skiing in the back seat because no. there's not the edge ends. Right. Yeah, it's and it's a fun ski. I mean, we, the concept is there. I did, you know, they sent me a prototype, which was close to the yep. production <clears throat> model, but mm-hmm. still kind of had some weird stuff going Need on. Some tweaks. Yeah, and it it you know this was super fun. I skied it on an upside down day, upside down snow, so really heavy on top, light on the bottom, which in, is in, in in BC. No, in Bridge at Bridger Bowl actually. Oh. I tested the ski the first day. Because you're saying Bowl. it's super windy over there, right? Is it like a wind crust that you got and it was light on No, the in fact that well the this side of the bridgers, you know, that we're looking at from the garage here, those get a ton of wind. The prevailing winds are out of the west. So the west facing side of those mountains just get hammered. The east facing side just get filled in constantly. It's it's crazy. I mean you look at the mountains now, they're they look like they're bone dry. You drive around the other side and they're just full of snow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyways, I got to test the ski on an upside down snowpack, which is generally hard to ski. A lot of, you know, everyone, you, it's a type of snow that wants to make you punch front. You're always, cause you dig, you're, you're sink in, the heavy snow hits your shin, slows you down, your upper body carries the momentum forward. And all of a sudden you're face planting and tomahawking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I would, that's what was going on all day. But this ski has so much surface area and can and can actually turn at a at a slow to moderate you know speed yeah. that it, it it blew my mind i still had to lean back a little bit 
in that type of snow, which is, you just don't want your tips to dive in that snow. Right. As soon as your tips dive in that upside down snow, you're tomahawking. And, um, yeah, I just had a great time. Now we have the production model here. I got two pairs. I got a one to ski tour on. We were able to interface a skin pretty easily into the bottom of the ski. And, um, with the t- the tip and tail being kind of asymmetric and weird, we didn't know. Mm-hmm. How that was going to work, but so the people that are looking for it, I think it's officially the butter knife, the SR something butter yeah. knife, yeah, the SR one twenty six, the Schlong, Schlong Rat one twenty six butter <laughs> knife. Well, we yeah, we try uh, we try to keep the Schlong Rat kind of more for those that know. Yeah, exactly, because it's not necessarily commercially. I don't know if the uh, ski shops or wherever, and and we you know we made a limited run of the ski. It's not a uh, it's kind of a novelty ski. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for get, people that are going to be in that zone in doing yeah, that thing, right? I mean, for me, it's a perfect ski to throw on my snowmobile on a really, after we've gotten a couple feet of snow, you're not going to go ride anything big, open, steep. You're going to go ride low angle snow in the trees. And yeah. that's, you know, it's an early season ski for, especially here in Montana, we notoriously have uh, a really bad snowpack till usually till the end of February or early March. And we're forced to ride low angle terrain, safe terrain manageable terrain and um that ski is what it's you know what it's designed for exactly that low angle terrain in the trees there you go <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's so fun it, it also you know i skied some pillow lines with it last winter and it's very nimble um and i i, I lo- i'm really looking forward to testing the ski further this winter you've been listening to the low pressure podcast the podcast for skiers. This has been a Redmark Media production.